<laughs> you're not really ready until you're safe. Summer safely and drive calm. Time to upgrade your adventure with an RV from Motorsportsland. Don't put off making exciting memories and exploring the many outdoor hideaways right here in Utah. Come in today and see how Motorsportsland can help you get away. Or visit motorsportsland.com. Your all-day resource for critical breaking news, traffic, and weather, and conversation about Utah's most important stories. Listen on any smart speaker, the KSL News Radio app, and in your car at 102.7 FM. KSL FM Midvale, KSL Salt Lake City, KSL News Radio, Utah's all-day companion for news. Good morning, KSL News. Time is 8 o'clock. Today is the 26th day of July. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Amanda Dixon. Tim has the morning off. Right now, downtown, 73 degrees. Got several slow spots out on the freeways now. I'm Andy Farnsworth. KSL's top story this hour. Severe Utah weather. The Utah Highway Patrol has been cleaning up and investigating a multi-car crash on I-15 and notifying the families of seven people who died during a sandstorm in Miller County. KSL News Radio's Mary Richards begins our live team coverage, Severe Utah Weather. Mary? And Amanda, I've been looking more over the video and the pictures that were sent to KSL News Radio, and it is so horrific. Just the debris, the cars mangled all up and down that stretch of I-15. It was southbound around 430 on Sunday uh, between Meadow and Kenosha going through Millard County and winds were so high they kicked up all the dust or dirt. It's so dry that there was just a lot of that topsoil we're understanding and no one could see. Car after car crashed into each other and the latest update of course puts it at seven people dying several others in the hospital including children. I-15 reopened this morning. Investigators have been working over the scene all night. Live Mary Richards, KSL News Radio. Southern Utah was also hit by multiple rounds of flash flooding this weekend. KSL News Radio's Mark Jackson continues our team coverage. Severe Utah weather. Flooding and hail coming down in Cedar City and Grand County. Officials say Pat Creek flooded as well. KSL traffic troopers reported seeing pretty big storms whipping up dust and dirt near Parowan late Sunday afternoon with 60 mile per hour winds estimated there and quarter sized hail. Some flash flooding was also seen as far north as Spanish Fort Canyon. If you woke up with a cough and scratchy throat the last couple days, the bad air quality could be to blame. KSL News Radio's Heather Kelly has details on our smoke filled sky. Heather? Well, Amanda, you may want to hold your breath until tomorrow night. That's when KSL TV meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke says all this smoke from California and Nevada wildfires will blow out of our state. For now, many residents between Brigham City and Springville have to contend with air quality, which is considered unhealthy for everyone in many neighborhoods. Doctors advise not to do any physical activity while outdoors in the red zones. Most of the Wasatch Front and back are listed as unhealthy for sensitive groups, which means they should remain indoors. Currently, the worst air quality is concentrated in Utah County and portions of the Salt Lake Valley. Live, Heather Kelly, KSL News Radio. Police believe a man accused of breaking into a pair of West Jordan homes close to the neighborhood or chose the neighborhood at random. KSL TV's Garna Mejia reports police say the break-ins were not the man's first crimes. West Jordan police say the man is 20-year-old Cesar Eduardo Aguilar. Before breaking into the two homes, police suspect he stabbed his friend 15 to 18 times inside a car a block away from the Decoraway neighborhood. Police also found a bloody knife with a 9-inch blade when they arrested him. Aguilar could be facing multiple felony charges, including criminal homicide. Police say after Aguilar broke into the second home, he fired several shots, narrowly missing a young boy in a house across the street. Hurricane police are investigating how a four-year-old boy died on Sunday. Cash Wallace was reported missing and several agencies took part in the search efforts. A few hours later, during a secondary search, detectives found Cash dead inside the home. Police say the boy lived with his grandmother and her boyfriend and there haven't been any previous incidents reported there. Investigators are now speaking with family members and looking at whether it was an accident or something else. KSL's top national stories this hour. The Delta variant of COVID-19 continues to surge in states around the nation, and there is a renewed push to get more Americans vaccinated. Provincetown, Massachusetts, on Cape Cod, Sunday, approved an emergency indoor mask mandate after an outbreak of 551 cases there, nearly 70% of them in fully vaccinated people. 
even as breakthrough cases in nearly every new hospital patient is unvaccinated. ABC's Faith Abube reporting. Some parents in the state of Indiana are calling for a return to masks for school kids this fall. You know, schools have fire drills. Schools have a table set up for kids who can't be around nuts. They do all these things to protect our kids and provide safety for the children. And this is just one more thing that we're asking them to do. Anne-Marie Valdez has two children in school, and she says she is being forced to choose between their education and their safety. The United States Olympic team has been making a strong showing when it comes to swimming. After winning gold and silver in the men's 400-meter individual medley, the U.S. has now won gold in the men's 4x100-meter freestyle relay, silver in the women's 400-meter freestyle, and silver in the women's 400-meter individual medley. Of Team USA's first 12 medals, eight were for swimming performances. ABC's Jim Ryan says in a highly anticipated race, Team USA's Katie Ledecky finished second behind Australia's Ariane Titmus in the women's 400-meter freestyle. I'm Dave Cauley, host of the podcast Cold. Our brand new second season focuses on the 1985 disappearance of a woman named Joyce Yost. Hear her voice for the first time. That's Cold Season 2, exclusively on Amazon Music.